Hi there. So previous videos, we've seen how to implement this very simple text adventure in Apple Basic. And this time we are moving forward a few years after around 1984 when the Apple IIe was launched into the, the late 80s or early 90s when the, the IBM PC the, and the clones of the IBM PC started basically dominating uh, computing, the personal computing, and the, the everybody had one. And that's where what the, the computer where you would have your text processor and your spreadsheets and you would play your computer games and you would uh, program. and things had moved so you you might recall that the apple IIe we were using the operating system that was burned in the rom of the, the computer so the computer was really you would take it off the box and you would turn it on and you could immediately use it it would be more useful if you could buy software for it and you could or put it uh, put them on via via the disk drives then yeah you could extend its functionality of course but you you didn't really need it however when we talk about the the the, the IBM PC uh, by the late 80s we are already talking about uh, 286 uh, 386 486 uh, machines these computers they they were just the hardware you needed to add software to it. And then you would put an operating system either from the hard disks, and then now we, we start having hard disks, and you would install your software. And you had access to many programming languages this way, many compilers. So in our case, we are using the Borland Turbo C compiler. That was a fairly common uh, compiler by the time. And we are again using an emulated platform that's representative of its time. We are going to use the DOSBox emulator to emulate a PC, an IBM PC running DOS and Borland Turbo C compiler. And now we will implement the same text adventure we implemented in BASIC. We are going to implement it in Turbo C and we are going to check how far programming went in the few years separating the mid 80s from the late 80s or the, the early 90s. So without further ado, let's go and uh, get our hands dirty. So this time we are going to implement our game in Turbo C, more specifically Borland Turbo C 3.0. I am using an emulated environment using DOSBox. And I already have Turbo C installed, so let's open the tool. There we go. I have already created an open file called getlamp.c that's currently open, and that's where we are going to start. So to understand the loop that we need to create, I'm going to define a function called game loop. It will not take any arguments. And what we really want to do here is we we want to start by printing the UR N message, right? So we show where you are, then we list the objects. In this on this location, and then we display the prompt we get user input we process this input and that's it then we are ready to do this loop once again so every C program needs to start with a main function and we have an endless loop where we just run this game loop. Okay. So F2 will save, F9 will make it. Okay. We have legal code. I will not try this program just yet because we need to be able to quit it. Let's go a bit further. So in C, we cannot simply use functions without importing them, even if they are part of the standard library. So in our case, in order to print something to the console, 
we need to include the standard input output functions and here we do print f you are in an empty office later we are going to put a description that's not simply a constant but this is a good start so we have this print message and then we say something like you see a lamp again we are going to replace this with an actual dynamic behavior later note uh, how we put this uh, backslash n that's the end of line character now we have to get user input and in order to read user input we need this f get s it's a get string function and then we need a variable to receive this uh, the the contents of this function so i'm going to declare a variable that's a character array of size certain max size and here we can use a define declaration to say that max input is i don't know 100 characters and this gets replaced during compilation time so we have this variable with that's basically a string with a maximum size of 100 characters and then we say okay we want to get a string and then we want this string to be on this variable of this size and we want to for, to come from standard input from the console we want this string to come from so basically whatever the user types and hits an enter at the end it's going to land inside this input variable and then we want to do something with this input and we will have a function called process input that receives this variable okay so now we need to process this input so it's a new function and it's going to receive a pointer to a string and because we don't have intention of changing this it's always good that we say that this is a constant so if we try to change this we get a compiler warning so that's just a very advisable hygienic measure to ensure that we are not changing constants and that when we have variables that we did need, intend to change that they are very explicit so here we can do something like this we want to see if this input is equals uh, for instance let's put the command quit as the first one so if the input is quit then we want to end the program and uh, now we need to compare strings we need to compare the input with quit and in order to do that we need another library that contains uh, utility functions sorry it's a string not strings okay and here this gives us the ability to say if string compare input with the command quit so if these two things are equal string compare will return zero so you say okay if string uh, if input is equals to quit then we exit the program And put some nice message here okay now I think we have something that we can 
run. So this is sitting in this get lamp directory. So the source code is under source and the compiled uh, output is under out. So let's see what we have. Um, oh, I already see something that I don't like. I put a, a new line where I shouldn't. So between this cursor with this uh, greater than signal and the actual place where we can type the command, there is a new line, which I don't want. But we can quit already. We should be able to. So I'm not sure what's going on, but there's one way that we can try to find out. It's probably a good uh, hygienic measure if by now that we print the output that we get. And I think there's a good chance that there's some other characters like the new line or something at the end of this string that uh, are making this comparison to fail. So one way that we can work around this is to say we want to compare only a certain number of characters. Which in this case would be only the first four characters, right? Q, U, I, T. So let's try this new version and see if it runs. So I just compiled it and now I'm going to run it again. Yep. So I think there were some new line characters at the end of that string that were preventing the comparison from working out. And by the way, we still have to fix that uh, new line that's in the wrong place. So let's just uh, go and fix it. So I'm going to leave this uh, print of the, the command in case we need to debug later and then I, I will remove it when it when the time comes. Okay, so we have something basic going on here already. But uh, in order to process commands, we need to be able to separate uh, the, the, the verb from the noun part when we have a more complicated command. For instance, if you have like go, the command go, right, from to go north, go south, go west, you have two parts, you have the go command and then you have the direction that you have to go. And uh, that means we need to separate uh, the, the command between a verb part and an, a noun part. And the way we do this is we need a couple of strings. So I'm just going to declare a string pointer called verb and another one called noun. And uh, if you're not familiar with C, this uh, asterisk means that noun is a pointer to a character. So it's not a single character, but it's actually the memory address of a character. And because a character a string is just a sequence of characters. This points to the first character in a string. So that's why we, instead of having a string type, we use uh, character pointers. So in our case, we say, okay, verb is going to, we're going to tokenize the input. So the concept of tokenization is you take a string and you break it in smaller parts. Uh, every time you find certain character that's a separator of the different parts. And in this case, we are saying that we have two separators. One of them is a space and the other is the new line. So this is going to take the input and it's going to break it in uh, words that are divided by their spaces or new lines. And in our case, the verb is the first one. So the first time you call a string token, you get a verb. And then the second time we call it and this time we pass null as the first argument, which means use the same string as before. And again, we want space and a new line. 
as the the separators of the words okay here we should have a verb and a noun and, and now because this str talk is going to remove the new lines and spaces we can really compare the verb without bothering with the number of characters that we want to compare so f2 to save f9 to compile and let's try the game again okay that's working well now that we have a way to process comments the first command we need to to deal with is uh, going places right go north go south and so on and here's something that's very different between basic and c on c we can define our own data structures on basic we had variables that could be integers or strings or floats and that's it but here we can define our data types that uh, are built up of simpler data types right. and in order to do that i will create a new file and let me save this with the name game structs dot h so it's dot h is a header file and that's where we put data structures that we can definitions that we can reuse and definitely this is something that could be reused among uh, different games you i could have put this on the same source as the the game but uh, yeah because this is something potentially reusable it's better that we keep separate first thing is we are going to define a data structure called location and this data structure it will have a description I'm going to call it uh, desk it's a string and then if you are in a certain location that has a certain description and you take a direction let's say you go north you you land on a different location we are defining for each one of the directions the possible directions we are defining a different variable that's an integer pointing to the index of that location so that uh, that takes care of our location so f2 okay just save this I'm going to close this file and here we bring it here sorry wrong line so same way that we included some standard libraries from the platform here we include our game structs dot h and then that means we can use uh, our data type location here and for this data type using this data type now we are going to define a number of locations and this is going to be glob a global a set of global variables this is the first of a set of global variables that we are using on this program so all the functions can see these variables these days global variables are frowned upon and there are definitely ways that we could handle this without global variables but this is the you know, most common practice that was used uh, back then uh, so we are not going overboard with global variables we should never go overboard with them but we're gonna have some and the type it, it, basically we have an array of locations we want an array of locations of this type so this uh, struct location type and we say okay it's going to be called locks just because it's a short convenient name and here we have we declare the first one and we say this is an empty office there is there are there there is a door to the south and a locked door to the east 
And now we have to define the directions. In our case, let's say let's that let's say that minus one because minus one will never be a valid array position. Minus one means nowhere. It leads nowhere. I, I cannot go in this direction. So you cannot go north. If you go south, you go to the stock room, and the stock room is the second location. So we start numbering at zeros. So the first uh, room, the one. We are talking about the office that's zero then the stock room is going to be one and you, you cannot go in any other direction so that's the first uh, line and we are going to populate this with uh, four different entries each one for a different location but before we do that, there's something that I like here. So these numbers, they are very cryptic, right? We, we implemented a bit like this in BASIC, where we had a convention that a zero meant uh, you cannot go this way, and one, two, three, four were varied locations. Um, but uh, here we can do something a bit better. We can define some constants. We can say that nowhere it's uh, minus one. So that's already better. Still, we can go beyond that and say we have the location, the office is the first location, that's zero. I keep hitting the wrong character there. Location, stock room, is one location dark room is two and the final location in our game is the outside world and that's three so here we say direction south takes us to the stock room and all the others uh, go nowhere. So we have to type the remaining locations. I will use the magic of video editing to save your time. Okay, so here we are after a small time travel. We have all the location descriptions populated and we have all the uh, the target uh, locations defined. And now we can get busy with the, the go command. Oh, first, before we, we do the go command, now we can say, again, the global variables, right? I'm gonna put a comment here to separate the functions. From the global variable so we say okay there is a variable called cur lock as in current location and we start at location zero that's our pointer to where we are and here we can say you are n and then a string and that string it's going to be the array locks at position current location Let's save it, compile it. There's error, of course. Too many types and declaration. Oh, I think I am missing a end of uh, this uh, structure. So let me see what's the problem here. So first thing I can see is that uh, I have a typo. I had two R's there, but uh, that's not causing the too many types in declaration error, I suspect. 
suspect there may be something going on with our oh if we are lacking this uh, term the ter correct termination of this struct so I'm going to save this file and uh, this one let's try again yeah that was it oh it's complaining that uh, the process input function is not returning a value this it's not returning at all so we can save can solve the, the problem this way uh, now we are not using yet uh, in this suspicious power uh, pointer conversion i don't think we can get rid of it now so let's try to run this thing again you see that we have now the description that's coming from that array so that's good so now the next thing is to process the command go and we can do that comparing our verb with go and I will change this to be an else if because the verb is either go or quit it can be both at once so if the verb is go we call a new function called command go and this function we provide the noun as the argument because that's the direction that we need to go and we declare here the function so we have a constant uh, string with a destination and we do something and then return at the end so first some sanity checks are in order so let's say that our destination is null well that means for instance that the user has just typed go but uh, no destination in this case we want to ask something like where to i mean go where i don't know where And at this point, we can simply return from here, right? So, if destination is not no, we can see, for instance, is destin the destination the same as north? And in this case, we want to set the new location so I will declare a variable here called new location right we had the current location and now we have the new location and uh, it will start with the value nowhere so we say then if the destination is north then the new location it's going to be the current location north destination you see here we are going to the global array locks with the global variable current location so we always pick up the current location that the player is in and then we say okay if we are trying to go north the new location is north But note that we are not changing the current location yet because what we want to do is after this if block, the new if block, we say if the new location is nowhere, for instance, north may lead nowhere. And in this case, we don't want the user doing anything. So if the new location is nowhere, we say 
you cannot go in that direction. However, if the destination is different, the new location is different than nowhere, that means it's a valid one. Then we say, okay, the current location is the new location. This is where we actually move the user from one place to another. And I've done this for the first direction. Uh, north. Now we need to do the same thing for south, east, and west, and I will again do a little time travel to save you time. Okay, I have just typed uh, the remaining locations, and you can see that now we have not only north but also south, east, and west. And what happens if we we have something that's different right so it's not that you cannot go in this location to this, this destination we don't even know what is it so i don't know this direction we can even give a hint of what is the direction just for debugging purposes. Save, compile, errors of course. Oh, that's right. So actually this is used when you have a pointer to a struct. In our case we don't have a pointer, we have the actual value of the struct. So we use the dot instead of that uh, little arrow. So this is uh, yeah, one of the most important things in C that you are manipulating memory directly. So there's a clear distinction between variables that contain a value that's on the stack versus a pointer to anywhere in memory. And you, you must have this distinction very clear. So now it's all good. And we try it out again. Now we can go south, I believe. Yay, we're in the stock room. So yeah, we can go back north, but we cannot go north again. Yeah, you cannot go in that direction. That's brilliant. Okay, now that we have the go command, it's time to take care of the, the objects because we have now dynamic locations, but we have only this fixed string here. And uh, we, we really want uh, to see the objects that are indeed on this location. And that will take us back to our header file. We already had uh, a structure, a, a data type that we created specifically for dealing with locations. And now we are going to do a similar thing with objects. So I'm going to define a structure object, and this is not at all in the sense of object orientation, which is something that we are going to see with other languages, but this is really like a physical object of the world, like a lamp or a key. So we define the struct object, and I must not forget to add the proper semicolon. And here we want to have a description. And the description is something like a key. But also we want the name that the user will call the object when making commands. For The description will say, here's a key, but the user says, take key. Doesn't, the user doesn't write take a key, it says take key. So I'm going to call this shorter um, name of the object tag. And the object will be somewhere. Now see that we are reusing the object, uh, the, I'm sorry, the data structure that we created before. So we're basically pointing, the, saying that the object has a pointer to a location. That's the location where this object is currently 
located. However, I want to define the notion that the, the object is, is with the player. It's in the, 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 the user, the player inventory. So I'm going to just say that inventory, uh, we can use, for instance, minus one again. Say inventory, that that would be the location when something is with the user. Otherwise, it's going to be in one of the game locations. Save this file. We close this window. Uh, we're back here. Oh, because we are already including that uh, header file, we already got uh, all these changes here. So now we have to define the, the objects of our world, same way that we define the locations. We are going to define some objects, an array of type object called objects. In this array, we have a lamp. And the tag is lamp. And this is on the office, right? So we say it's in the location lock office. But because this is a pointer to a location, which means this is the address pointing to the memory location where we have this location structure. I know this sounds a bit confusing. Let me say that with different words. We have a certain place in memory that has an address, and that place contains the location struct. In this case, is this and this location struct. And in order to provide that address, we use this n percent operator. So this basically saying at address of the office location inside the location array. So this is how we put inside our objects a reference to a location. And same wise we say that the key is in the stock room. Again, lack of semicolons causing havoc. Yep. Being a programmer is caring about semicolons all the time and commas and dots and parentheses and yeah, that's that's the lot we've chosen. So we have our objects that are defined and now we have every time that we enter a room we want to see what objects are in there. So the same way that we had like a process input here, I'm going to add here, let's call a function. We can call it a list objects. And we have to say where we are, right? What is the current location? So that would be Probably we have to pass the address of that. Now let's declare this function. So it's a list objects and we get a struct of the type location, a pointer to a structure of the type location. I'm gonna just call it lock. And now we have to iterate through the array of objects 
and check if the location matches the current location. If it does, then we print it on the screen. The question is how to iterate across this array. So here we need some tricks. There are many ways of doing this. I think the most intuitive is to just use A4 like we had in basic. And we need a index variable that's typically called I. And we want this to the, the, the end condition of the loop is when I matches the length of the array. In our case, we know that our objects array has just two entries. So length is two, but I will call obs. For now, let's just put something here, placeholder. I'm gonna populate this with something later. Say, okay, if when we, we reach the length of objects, then we increment our our index counter. But uh, we, we also need the object, right, that we are going to manipulate. So that's uh, the type struct object. And it starts just pointing to objects. So this is going to point to the first entry. So right now we have object as the first object, the lamp. And every time we increment the index, we also increment the pointer to object. So you see this OBJ is a pointer and we are going to increment that pointer, which means we are going to point to the next object in that array. So this way, every time we run a different iteration of this for loop, we have a different OBJ and uh, pointing to the next one. So in our case, we want to check if the object location is the same as the location that we are in now. And if it is, we want to print UC, then it's like you see a key, you see a lamp, here it's and because object is a pointer then we use this little arrow here to uh, dereference the, the the different parts of the struct so this is how it works and in the end we return and that's how the list objects uh, function works However, we have this object's length, right? That we have not defined. So we, we have to define this thing. You see, one way to do this is I could just come here and say, okay, we have two objects. So the length is two. So, and that would work. By the way, let me show you how this works before we move on. It's just in the wrong spot. Let me show you. Just, just a second. I want to make sure that I I haven't made a mistake here. You see, oh, uh, oh yeah, I, we want to get rid of this one because the this list objects, now it's going to take care of it. So let's try it again. You see a lamp, go south. You see a key, it's working. However, I promise that I would show you a slightly more decent way to deal with that because one thing I don't like about this thing we've done here is if we add more objects, we have to 
come and change this. That's very easy to forget. So basically, we can calculate this, this dynamically, but that depends on the memory size of the object structure. And we know the object size of the, the, the of a structure using this size of size of function. So the size of the entire objects ob objects um, array. So this is going to be the entire size of the array divided by the size of just one element. Any element will do. I'm going to use element zero here. So what th this division is going to result in two. And uh, if we increment, uh, let's say for the sake of argument that uh, the size of an individual object was 10 bytes in memory. I I'm just making this up to make it easy. And then if we have a list of three objects, that's going to be 30 bytes. So we have 30 divided by 10 uh, and we have three and that would be the length of our uh, array. So this, this way it will always work. We don't have to manually do anything. So let's save this and see that it's still working as it is. Okay, that takes care of listing the objects. The next thing we need is to be able to pick up objects and drop objects. Let's implement them the command to take the take an object. We open Turbo C ID again. Well here's where we list the objects and now we need to be able to take an object. So if our verb here is the same as take, oops, Colors are useful on an ID to spot when you're missing ending quotes. Yeah. Awesome. So it's command take. You saw that coming, right? And again, we have to pass the noun. In this case, the noun is the object, the name of the object that we want to take. So here we go. We say, okay, we have a command for taking an object. And that will receive a pointer to a character. We can call it uh, object name. Well, it's a, the object tag, right? Because this is not like take a key. It will say just take key. So it's the object tag, really. The first thing we need to do is have a pointer to the object that has this tag name. And in order to find it, we have to iterate inside the objects array and find the right one. And you can see that it's pretty much what we've done here, right? We would have the same kind of structure. Why don't I copy this piece of code? But notice that we likely have to do this time and time again. For dropping the object, we have to do the same. And for interacting with some objects, for instance, for um, lighting up the, the lamp, we're going to need this again and again. So we should make this a function that we can reuse. And in this case, it will be a function that returns something. Uh, I, I don't think I explained this uh, C syntax. I just took it for granted. But the syntax is basically you have the, like the return type, the, the type of uh, data that you are returning. And then you have the function name. And then you have arguments with, with their uh, data types as well. That's 
how you declare a function. So in our case, we return an object. So it's a struct of the type object, and it's a pointer to such a thing. And the good name for our function here would be find object by tag, because that's what it does. And the type of the, so we, we have only one argument in this case, and the type is a pointer to a char. That's the object tag that we want to find. And here we can insert that bit that we copied, right? So let's close this loop. So we are iterating through all object. And what we do here is we, if obj tag, and this is a string, so we have to use string compare, string comp object tag with the object tag that we got as input argument. They are the same. What we do is we return object, right? We are returning the pointer to the object whose tag matches our tag. And if we get, oops, I've done something wrong here. Yeah, I've inserted that thing again, so I want to undo out backspace. This is not working, so let me select this again and just cut it. Okay, so apologies for that. So back here, we are iterating through the array and we, when we find the one matching the tag name, we return it. So, but what if we get here without having returning, returning anything? So we can just return null and uh, we can say, okay, this function returns null if it cannot find the object. So back to a take command. So here we find, we call that function, right? Find object by tag and we provide the tag and this will return Uh, struct object pointer we call it, we can just call it obj here so okay we found the object and what do we want to do here with the object that we just found we we want to move it to the inventory and in this case it means moving it so we said that the, the location of obj is inventory. Do you remember? We defined this as minus one, so it's not one of the real locations that we have. So it just it means the player has it. But uh, what happens if the, the object is not here, right? Not in the current location. So we cannot take an object that's not in the current location just because we provided the right name. So we need to check this. So first we, we check if object is different than null. So this sh should always be true, but we can put this here as a sanity check because if uh, the previous function find object by tag could not find the object then something horribly wrong happened and we don't want to mess around with the memory. We don't want to make this assignment here because this pointer is just pointing to a random memory address and we could uh, break all sorts of uh, havoc here. So we say, okay, if the object is not null and the location of the object is the same as the address of the current location in the locations array, So if we could find this object and the object is present on the location where the, the player currently is, then we want to do this else. 
we can just tell the user, the player, you don't see that object here. And then we return because either way, either if we have changed the location to the inventory or if we told the user this is not possible, we want to return uh, to the caller, right? We want to return here and then we continue in our loop. So F2 will save this, F9 will make it, success. Okay, now we have a command to take objects, but we cannot really check if we have taken the object because we don't have any, a command for listing the, the, the inventory. That's what we're going to fix right now. This should be familiar by now. So we check if the verb is inventory. And if it is, we have a command inventory. Okay can just call uh, command env and we don't need any argument in this case we're good to go the inventory again we want to we, we don't want to select one special object, so our find object by tag function will not help us here. We really want to iterate through all the, the objects and see which ones are with the location inventory. So we really need, oh, we can copy it. We really need, need this uh, four once more. So I have to select it. Okay, so now we have this four again. And what we do here is, so we want to list all the objects that are with the user. So we can say up here, you are carrying and then if the object location is inventory just say you have oh no we, we we already said that on the top so we just can give a space and a line break and here it's the object description like a key a lamp and so on. And return. F2, F9. Let's try. Take lamp. Yes, we are carrying a lamp. Now we can go south. Let me try something before we do this. So we here we don't have any key, right? We are in the empty office. So I'll try to take key here and it should not be possible. Yes. So now we go south and now we can take the key. Yes, we have a lamp and a key. Okay, so now we are able to go places and we are able to take things and we are able to list the things that we are carrying. 
And now we just need a few more commands to have a fully functioning proto game. And that will be our next step. We already have commands that allow us to go places and check the inventory and take objects. Now, let me walk you through the implementation of the remainder of the commands. I will not type the whole code as I have done for the previous commands because by now I think you have a good grasp on how Borland Turbo C works. So you see that we need a command for dropping objects and then we check if the verb is drop and we call the command providing the now, that's the object to be dropped and the pointer to the location where we are because that's where we are dropping the thing. And we have a command that's specific for certain object, the lamp. So we compare if the verb is light and the noun is lamp. And then we call the light lamp command. And we have the command to unlock the door. Again, we check for a specific unlock verb and specific uh, door now. And we call the command function. We have a function to just help with uh, the most used verbs. And the quit command, we already know it. So let's go down where we have the drop implementation. So drop is pretty much like take. It's the opposite of it. So instead of picking something up from a location, putting in the inventory, do it the other way around. So we find the object by its tag using the function we created previously, find object by tag. And we, ch we check that the location is inventory. And if it is, then we change the location of the object and provide an informative message. List objects, we already know how it works. So to light the lamp up, we check if the user has the lamp, which means the lamp's location is inventory. Again, we use the find object by tag function. And if we are holding the lamp, then we change our world. We change the description of the lamp object to a lit lamp as opposed to just a lamp. And we change the description of the dark room to say that's an empty room with uh, doors, including a door south. And we allow the player to go from the dark room to the outside world going south. And again, an informative message. For unlocking the door, we find the key object, we make sure that the user is in the right location and that they have the key and that, that the door is not yet unlocked. And if all these sanity checks pass, then we change the description of the office to say that's an open office with a door to the east, an open door to the east. And then we make it possible to go east to the dark room and say that the player has unlocked the door. Help command just prints out the most common verbs that uh, the user might try. And I've modified the game loop slightly to check whether you are already in the outside world. And if you are, we say that the player has won the game and we exit. And that's it. So let's compile it again. Success. Let's go to the out directory and take this text adventure for a spin. So we start in the empty office and we need to take this lamp and then go south. We see a key. Let's take it. Let's check we have everything. Yes, we go north. And here we need to unlock the door and go east. OK, we cannot see a thing, so we need to light lamp. And now we can go south and win the game. OK, great. So we got ourselves a short text adventure written in C using Borland Turbo C in DOS.